welcome to another episode. Today I'm coming to you from the out, just outside of Discovery Bay Marine Lab here in Jamaica, and I want to talk about the dilemma of the inverted trophic pyramid. Now, coral reefs are some of the most populated uh, ecosystems on the planet, especially in the marine environment, but it really confused marine ecologists and coral reef biologists because there wasn't enough primary producers to support the number of uh, secondary consumers that are found on, the, on these reefs. So it really confused uh, scientists. Uh, you can look at the water out here, it's crystal clear. The reason it's crystal clear is because there's no phytoplankton in the water. Very little primary production, it, it appears. Where further outside the tropics, we have water that is not nearly as clear because there's so much phytoplankton, the basis of those trophic pyramids. So, a typical trophic pyramid, we have at the bottom, like we see in the picture here, mainly primary producers, the biggest section, and then the herbivores, and then the uh, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers. But here, it's just the opposite. The, the primary producers make up the smallest one, like we see in this picture right here, and it's inverted. Well, through a lot of research done, mainly here at this facility, scientists discovered that the reason the corals could grow as popular, as, as much and as big and as quickly as they were doing when they should be feeding on phytoplankton is that they had the primary producers inside of their tissue. And that is the zooxanthellae that I've talked about in other episodes. So it was because of places like this, mainly this place, that we fully understood the trophic pyramid system in a coral reef ecosystem. So a little bit on trophic pyramids and the great dilemma. Thanks for watching.